So I grew up in the eastern suburbs in Mitcham. I went to Ringwood Little Ass Centre and then eventually Ringwood Seniors. And um, when I was 25, I actually made it to the Olympics. So I made the Atlanta Olympics uh, as a 25 year old. Um, and I remember that day walking out of the tunnel, um, green and gold on, weighing 81 kilos. I hadn't had chocolate for two years. So I was, I was, I was cut up. I had salads, <laughs> salads, water. Um, I remember the diet, how strict I was with the food. I'm about 105 kilos now, so I know what food's all about. I've put it on, put on weight put on 20 kilos since I used to race, but um, I really miss, I miss athletics and the opportunity that you guys have got to re represent the state and go through all those feelings of the day. I think that's what we just heard about on, the, on the, the last talk was about feelings. And I remember racing and just, you know, really thriving on that feeling of race day. The nerves, the uh, excitement, the crowd, hearing this crazy woman screaming in the crowd, it was my mum. So I, um, I remember, as I said, that tunnel, when I walked out of the tunnel in Atlanta, I had the green and gold on. Um, I've got that singlet and shorts here today because I'm, I'm a bit of a hoarder. I keep everything. So this backpack is from Sydney Olympics and I pretty much opened it up this morning and I found my race plan. I found my training programs, um, the Metzl cream I was using on my legs, um, <laughs> the, eye, the eye drops I had for my contact lens. Everything's in that bag, so it's like a, a time capsule. And I opened it up today. To, to talk about race preparation with you guys and planning your race day. And I started learning that when I was at your age. So when I went to the States um, and started running for Victoria at the all schools and then national championships, I was, I was lucky enough to win 12 national championships. So I've got a couple of my national title medals here. I've also got two medals from primary school. So when I was in grade five, I won a state primary um, bronze and I won a state primary gold in grade six. So, they're two of the most important medals of my whole career because that was, the, that was the two medals that I got that taste of standing on the dais and I realised this is, this is a great feeling, this is what I want to keep doing. Um, I was a very shy kid, um, so athletics was a great sport for me to get confidence, get self-esteem, um, start setting some crazy goals and dreams and like I said when I was 10 I said I want to run for Australia, I want to run at the Olympics one day and um, it came true and I, I walked out of that tunnel, green and gold on, I started having a flashback of my all school races, running for Victoria, uh, running from a school, went to Mitcham Tech, um, running national titles, meeting all these um, legends that I used to have on my school folder at high school, so Carl Lewis, Roger Kingdom, um, probably names you're not sure of, but they, they were dominating the sport back in the 80s and 90s, so I had them on my school folder and then sure enough, Atlanta Olympics, I was racing beside them. And um, a lot of the things that got me through that day were preparation, so planning. I, I mentally prepared for the day, visually prepared for the day. So I even had a picture of that home straight on my, on my bedroom wall and on my hotel wall. And any room that I had in the preparation, I had this picture of the home straight. So when I walked out of that tunnel, First I heard this crazy woman screaming, it was mum, and I felt like saying, mum, shut up, this is Olympics. <laughs> but um, but uh, it also relaxed me because I'm thinking, that's what mum normally does. She's done it since that primary school medal, and here I am at the Olympics and mum's doing the same thing. She's screaming her head off. So she's doing her job right. I've got to do my job right. I've got to race. So I walked out, measured my blocks, looked down at that home straight, and that was the picture I had on my wall. So I felt like hey, I'm, I'm already at home, I know this picture. Um, it was a blank track, so no crowd, no hurdlers, but here, here the day was, it was 10.30 in the morning. Uh, I'm not a morning person, so I spent two weeks getting up at five o'clock, so I'd be ready for that 10 o'clock race. So the body takes about five hours to be fully awake. So I didn't want to stuff this first race up. So I thought, all right, let's turn yourself into a morning person. So for two weeks, I got up at five o'clock, jumped, put my feet in a bucket of cold ice. It was like, like a shot of coffee. It was like, and, um, and that, got me, so that got me ready for that, that race. It, it made me into a morning person. And, um, and when I looked down that track, I felt comfortable. I felt, hey, I belong here. I, I know this picture. I've just got to go and race. And... Um, Mum settled down, so that was good. She just turned the volume down. 
the crowd was there. It, I thought it might be a quiet crowd in the morning, but it was full, fully packed. So that, they were just cheering as loud as possible. Um, my competitors were pretty fired up. Your competitors don't say much to you in a race, so it, it goes a bit silent in the call room and in the warm-up. No one says much. It's a bit like a, a poker game that everyone just has that poker face and they keep their cards close to their chest. But that's good. That's what you have to prepare for. And, um, and I went out and I won that first race. And then the second race that afternoon, I, came, I got through the second round. Then I made the semi the next day. And then I made the Olympic final um, on Monday night. So Sunday morning to Monday night, four of the biggest races of my whole life. Your emotions are going all over the place. Um, your excitement's going all over the place. But routine and planning is what you, you go back to. So um, when Nick asked me to sort of come for this session, it was right down my alley because I was an athlete that wrote down my whole plan for the, for the warm-up. Um, I would pack my bag very particular the, the night before because I knew I didn't want to wake up stressed that morning or where's my spikes or I haven't got pins or where's those favourite socks or where's those red jocks that I like to wear? Oh, they're, they're dirty. Oh, no. So I, I, would, I would prepare everything. I would, I would be preparing my clothes three or four days out, preparing the favourite clothes that I had, those shoes, if I needed new laces, if I needed new spikes, I would have that all done in my shoes. So when it came to the night before, all I had to do was try and sleep. And normally you're a bit restless before a race, so you might not have the best night's sleep. So if it was a Saturday race, Friday night, night might be a bit, bit, uh, bit of a light night of sleep, but it's important to get a good night, sort of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, leading into a race, because they're, the, they're the sort of set up sleep nights for you. And also just eating, I, I would, like I said, I'd be eating salads for, for months and months and months, but that last night I'd want to feel comfortable, so I'd go and have Chinese or Thai or something that I really love. So I wouldn't worry about the calories or fat for that last night. I would just want a food that would make me feel good and comfortable. You know when you go to bed after a big feed and you just want to just want to crash. So I wanted to crash. So food, it might sound a bit weird, but it gets you into the right mood. Um, for a race day, I, I'm, not an, I'm not an aggressive person. I'm not, an, I'm, not, I'm not assertive. I'm not really that competitive. But on race day, and Nick, Nick would remember my face from race day, I would be like a a bull ready to get out of the gates and I would be spending days getting myself into that mood and most of my competitors would see me and go oh no I've got to race Kyle again but they wouldn't know that I'm like a little butterfly <laughs> or whatever I don't know if butterfly is the right word but um, <laughs> and when I would shake their hand and, and say g'day mate how was your race and hey how you going they'd be like hang on this guy would look like he was going to knock her head off about 20 minutes ago. But that, that was just getting into the right mood. So mood was one of the big things that I had to prepare for, but also the planning of the day. So when I talked about getting the bag ready the night before, I'd also write down my warm-up, and I'd start to write down a couple of key things in the warm-up that I wanted to achieve. So I would write down when I wanted to rock up to the track or when I wanted to turn up to the track, when my race, when my race was on that day, what time, what time I had to go to the call room, um, when I wanted to start my jogging, how much, I want, how much stretching I wanted to do. So if I wanted to do 15 minutes of stretching, I would write that down. How much drills I would do. So I'd write my sprint drills down. When I wanted to do a block start, when I wanted to do one run over one hurdle, and even write down to, okay, I need to have a three minute rest and change into my, take my, my flats off and put my spikes on. So I'd, I'd allow, two minutes for changing shoes, uh, 15 minutes for jogging, all, all down on a sheet. So that's probably something we're going to get into today in, in our little groups today. But that's the sort of thing you can do. And what, you know, people might say, why do you do that? But when you've got a lot of nerves running through the body and a lot of, a lot of adrenaline, and normally on race day, who gets adrenaline or nerves going through their body? All right, so when you feel that, that's a good thing. But if you've got a plan, you can actually stop yourself getting too much adrenaline or too much nerves. If you've got a little bit of paper to look back to, it's like, okay, it's uh, 20 to 2 now. I have to start my jogging in five minutes. So I'm just going to have a chat to my friends. 
how you going, da 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 have a chat, relax yourself, but then you know, hang on, I've just chatted too long, I've got to go, I've got to start my jog. So when you've got like a time to stick to, it allows you to, to relax, but it also allows you to start being very specific. Because when I'd go to the Olympics and I'd go to the warm-up track, I'd see Carl Lewis, one of the best long jumpers in the world, best sprinters. I'd see Colin Jackson, I'd see Linford Christie. I'd see all the best athletes in the world at the warm-up track. And it's easy to become a, um, a tourist or a, you know, to go sightseeing. And you go, oh my God, look at Linford. Oh, geez. Look at the drills he's doing. And, oh, I might try that drill, yeah. <laughs> and it, if you start copying what, your athletes, what the other athletes are doing, you've just lost your own routine and you're probably going to try stuff that it's not right to try at the warm-up track for a race. So sticking to your plan is one of the hardest things. But if you've got a plan and you guys are at the right age to start practicing a plan. So you don't have to sort of set you know, a super complicated plan, but a plan that's right for you, and, and slowly that plan will get more and more complicated. So if I pull out my plan for Sydney, Sydney Olympics, you know, I've got um, wake up at 5.30, leave, for, leave the apartment at 6.20, arrive at the warm-up track at 7.15 a.m., start the warm-up at 7.50, walk for a little bit of it, start stretching at 8 o'clock, uh, finish stretching at 8.30, start drills at 8.30, block starts at 8.45. Um, start thinking about the five quick steps out of the blocks. Do a start to the first hurdle, second hurdle, third hurdle. Stay tight with your arms. So, so keeping my arms tight, not sort of flopping out the back with the blocks. Relax, Qu quick rhythm. Finish warm up at 9.05, change, change my clothes. So I normally have some dry clothes in my bag. So if I, if I did a warm up in a dry fit, it would still be sweaty and wet. So I'd normally go, well, that's the warm up done. Chuck that in the bag and have a nice dry t-shirt to go to the call room and uh, even tights. So I'd have a change of clothes. So if I was going to a call room and they had air conditioning on and I had a wet, a wet top on for my warm up, then I would get cold. So I'd just lose all that warm up by having a wet, wet top on. So just little things like that, just an extra spare t-shirt in your bag. Um, what have I got? Uh, wait, walk to the call room. So I've allowed three minutes to walk to the call room. It's only across the track, but it's better walking across with three minutes to relax rather than, oh shit, I've got to get to the call room. Because then that's another rep in your run through. You didn't plan that running rep in your warm up. So you, you don't want to do extra stuff. When, when I did my warm up, I used to think about myself as a, as a gun or as you know, having bullets. And if I, if, I had, if I had four bullets for the day, so maybe I'd do two fast warm up block starts, that would be two bullets I'd fire in the warm up track. And my fourth bullet would want to be the race the race start. So I'd go to the race and do a practice start. You know how you get out to the start line and you do a little practice? So that would be one practice. And then when the starter blows the whistle and says, right, everyone on your marks, that fourth bullet would be my, the race. But if I had a day where I didn't feel that good or something was, you know, my body wasn't responding, I might make the call and say, look, I think I've only got three bullets today. So I wouldn't be doing too many starts in the warm up and then get to the race and I'm trying to do a fourth bullet, but I'm just feeling, feeling flat. So it gets down to even that specific sort of level, um, knowing how many bullets you're going to fire on the day. And sometimes it's a confidence to stop your warm up and say, okay, that's enough. I've done a couple of good starts. My next good start is going to be the race, but I'm not going to keep doing start, 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 starts in the warm up and then get to the race and go, all right, this is the one I really want to fire on. Oh, I missed the start. You fired too many bullets in the warm up. Does that make sense? Yep. So, and then I had the race here at 10 o'clock, heat one, lane eight. So I would, know, I would know what heat I'm in. I would know what lane I'm in. So you can start visualizing, okay, I've got lane eight. So lane eight at Sydney Olympics, I was right next to the crowd. I could hear people going, yeah, go Aussie. Yeah, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. I'm like, can you just shut up? I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> and then I could smell hot chips and pies and, and I'm like, 
and I could hear Ozzy's yelling out my name and I'm like, I know that voice. And then I'm like, don't look up, you know, don't look up because you'll probably use up more energy. So one of the things I, I mentioned before about adrenaline and energy is, is trying to keep all that energy you've got and that adrenaline, keep it all sort of bottled up. Or I, I used to think of my energy as a little Vegemite jar and like, don't open the lid too early because all your energy will just go out. And you'll get to the race start and you'll be wanting to go. You'll be wanting to fire up, but you've just opened the lid and your energy's either gone at the warm-up track because you're just, just too excited. You're jumping around with all your mates. Or you get out there and you look at the crowd and you start waving. Hey, hey, are they? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, if I was waving to the crowd too much, that would be like energy just coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out. So if you see me race at the Olympics, I would just go, yep. I know you're there, it's very noisy, thanks. And then you go back to your, back to your plan because you want to keep that adrenaline and that energy all sort of locked up until you hear the gun go. So um, how long am I talking for? Because I'll keep going on and on. <laughs> I reckon we expand for another five minutes and we'll do some review at the end after we yeah. the group. Yeah, all right. And we might wait for questions in there. After we've all done our own warm-up today and got back into our specialist group. So it, it's about planning the day and, and it's... Um, it's remembering that it's very individual to you, you as well. So you'll know what gets you up, what gets you excited, what gets you into the right mood. So if I go to the warm-up track and I see guys doing these fancy drills, bum kicks, side skips, can-can, all these sorts of things, if that's not right for me, I'll go, oh, that, that looks good, good on them. But it's sticking, it's sticking to a simple plan for yourself. And you'll know in all your training up to this what what gets your hammies ready or what gets your ankles ready or, or what gets you thinking tall before a race so you don't sort of sink, sink out of the blocks. Um, what helps you relax? Some people like music. I love music but I never liked it in the warm-up because I'd just, I'd probably go off into another world and start thinking I'm at a nightclub or something. <laughs> and that, that's not where I want to be. I want to be at the track. I want to be, I want to know what I'm getting ready for. Um, what else can I talk about? I, I talked about Sydney Olympics. I talked about um, Atlanta. So I was able to run four world championships, uh, two, two Olympics, uh, four world champs, four Commonwealth Games, two Olympics. I've won 12 national titles and I used to do that plan for the whole lot. So uh, every plan might be slightly different but if you talk about what I miss the most, I don't miss winning medals or getting fast times, but I miss that feeling that you get on race day. So I miss that nerves, I miss that adrenaline. And all the training and preparation you do is to get yourself on that start line and to go through all those nerves. So nerves are a good thing. Um, people put their hand up before about nerves. Nerves are a good thing. So don't, don't worry about nerves. My nerves I treated like a friend. So when, a ner when my nerves come, I'd say, g'day, g'day buddy, I knew you'd be here today. And, um, <laughs> and nerves, nerves meant that I cared. So if I was nervous, it meant that I really cared about a race. Um, was I nervous to speak to you guys today? Yeah, I felt the nerves when I came from the car. Nerves meant that, hey, I care about this. I want to say something good. I want, I want you guys to get something out of this. So when you race, nerves are a good thing. Nerves just mean, hey, I really care about this race today. But you've got to control the nerves. So you've got to sort of say, all right, guys, I knew you'd be here today. Let's take a deep breath. I'm not going to sort of push you out. But it's um, acknowledging nerves and realising that they're a good thing. Um, and when I, the, the harder my race has got, so at a world champs level, Olympic level, my nerves would be kicking in. And I'd be like, OK, guys, yeah, I knew you'd be here. Thanks for coming. Let's get ready for this. And do my breathing routine look at my 10th hurdle, count back 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In positive, out negative. So if I was looking at the hurdles going, geez, what if I get a shit start? What if I hit the first hurdle? What if, I, what if I'm out of the blocks last? What if they're beating me at the sixth hurdle? And that's all negative. So in positive, I will get a good start. I'll run my own race. Um, I'm not going to hit any hurdles today. I'm going to stay tall. I'll get out of the blocks in my own way, even if that guy from Cuba just takes off and he's flying. 
I'm going to control my own race. So you've got to sort of fight with the head. The head will be saying, what about this? What about that? This could happen. You could get a bad start. That's the little negative side. And then you've got this whole other side of your brain that have all the positive. And that's what you've got to sort of fight. You sort of say, no, I will get a good start. I will get out of the blocks well. Or whatever event you're doing. I'm talking about sprints. But I'm sure there's a few other events here today. But it's just, it's dress rehearsing what you really want to happen in the race. And we heard, you heard a little bit about visualisation. Does anyone know what visualisation is? You've been sitting down too long? <laughs> well, vis visualising the race day. So when I had that picture of, my, of the home straight in Atlanta, I could visualise myself there on that day but then I would go a little bit further. So then I'd actually start to do a session, like a meditation session on a, in a hotel room, uh, laying down flat on a bed, and I'd actually lay there and visually think, okay, I've just done my warm up, I'm at the main stadium, I'm doing a practice start, set my blocks up, set, go, over one, that was a good practice start, walk back, take your tracksuit off, the, the whistle's just gone, you're in lane four, it's a nice sunny day, I can feel the sun on my back. I'm next to the world record holder, but I'm not, I'm not nervous, I'm excited. I shake his hand. Um, the starter's set on your marks. I go down, set, whoops, there's been a false start. Stand up, go back, take a deep breath, go down again. So I'll, I would visualise a whole day, so I would make a day up, but I would make the day up how I would want. And I'd also put false starts in. I'd also put um, who, I, who I might be compet competing against and I'd visualise the day and I'd even run the race. So I'd run the race, go, run over one, two, three, four, the whole race and I'd say stop. My coach would be timing me so I'd actually visualise it but he would time it and I would start to run crazy times for the hurdles like my best is 13.2, I ran 11.5 <laughs> visually. So visually, but what that, what that does is that that's like your, um, I was going to say like your Windows 8 program or your, your, your hard drive up here is your brain. So if you can program all your nervous system up here with a fast time, when the messages go down to these, these guys and these guys, they're going to be going down at that 11.5 speed. Okay, they're not going to come out at 11.5 because that'll be like impossible for a men's hurdles, 11.5. But um, it's, that, it's that programming and the power of how strong our brains are. If you program and visualise a time, that message, that wiring system will go down to all these guys and you'll, you'll run faster. So if I visualise for a race and then I went out on race day, I'd normally find that I'd find a couple extra tents just because I visualised and I really, I really tuned in the messages that I want down. So... Though that would be, you know, technical messages, but also speed, you know, the speed, the turnover that I wanted in between the hurdles. So um, I'm sure someone like Sally Pearson, you know, watching her execute and just nail her races at the Olympics, I'm sure she visualised how she wanted to do that. So we heard a little bit in her interviews, but I'm sure she just dress rehearsed, dress rehearsed, dress rehearsed. When you come to race day, it's like, come on, starter, just, can you just give me the starts, give me the fire the gun, so I'm, I'm ready to go. You sort of wired yourself ready to go. Was that too much? Was that too heavy? Did you understand that? Um, but that, that's just visualising and preparing yourself mentally. Um, visualising the day, so sometimes I'd visualise a rainy day or a windy day, so, OK, I've got a headwind today. I'm not nervous about a headwind. I've trained in headwind, so I'm ready for this, or in the rain. I've trained in Melbourne, I've grew up in Melbourne, it rains all the time. And then I would say to my coach in Melbourne, why are we training in the rain? He goes, you'll never know one day you, it might rain at the Olympics. And I go, it's not going to rain at the Olympics. And then sure enough, Sydney Olympics, I was 29, end of my career, getting towards the end, second round, raining. So I looked out of the tunnel, it's like, oh shit, it's raining. And all my, all my competitors you see them start tensing up. They were just like, oh, you know, they're from Europe, from Germany, and they're like, ah, oh, Sydney, you know, it's raining. And then I looked out and I went, 
oh, I'm from Melbourne, I can do this. <laughs> and, and, I, and I went out and I, I qualified, I made the semi-final. I probably wasn't in the best shape, but I ran exactly on my shape. So I ran 13, 13 6 all the way through the Olympics. So I was hoping for a 13 4 to come out of the body, but I might have been struggling in 13 8 shape before the Olympics, and I managed at the Olympics to run 13 6 in each round. And even when it rained, I ran 13 6. So that, that might have been worth a bit faster in the rain, but. I really enjoy just executing on the day and, and getting the best out of what the body had. And that's just controlling your nerves, being well prepared, um, not letting your emotions go on a roller coaster on race day because that's the day you've trained for. So if you can keep your emotions under control, your body will say, thank you, we're going to deliver. And, and like the guys that spoke before said that physically nothing happens to you. You don't lose any form but this guy up here is very powerful. So your brain and your emotions control it. So I'm someone that would run on, run on feelings too. So I would run on emotions and feelings. So um, I wouldn't run on aggression or being angry or, you know, I'm just going to knock your head off, mate. I'm going to, you know, that wouldn't work for me. I would, I would run better on feelings. So if I um, had a good meal the night before, you know, made sure my mum was there, made sure she wasn't too loud, but um, mum, you know, if I was in a relationship, all those little things leading into a race would help me, so um, yeah, that's about, about it. Um, Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, guys.